Okay, full transparency here. I'm just going to go in and straight up and say it. Um, I don't feel good. I'm in a lot of pain at the moment. So if I happen to have like labored breathing in this audio recording or if I just kind of stop for whatever reason, um, that's the reason why. Don't worry, I'm not dying. It's just like severe like abdominal pain. So yeah, I'm sure a lot of you don't really care. But like, hey, let's talk about Epic 7! So hey, uh, first um, match here, it's very, very, very simple. It's, uh, we have Zahawk, and honestly, we need a lot more answers to um, evasion shenanigans. Because off the top of my head, like, what are the big ones that really counter evasion? It's Zahawk, um, Senya, um, Briar Witches area, and then there's, like, a few of them that, like, can hit but it's not like a guaranteed hit like even Zahawk's not guaranteed because you need to have um, um, symbol of unity to like even hit evasion but like god he just does so much damage it just feels like it's the number one best option to really use so yeah sorry there's not a lot of variety on that front but like hey blame all the people who use uh, savior Aiden god knows I sure certainly did thank god RTA is almost over and quite frankly I really hope a lot of you guys are almost done with your RTAs as well um, I believe it ends, what, the next day? Uh, two days or tomorrow? It's uh, very, very close. And what I did to get through that is I did a lot of first picking uh, Unbound Knight Arrowell. Because it turns out, I mean, catch me if I'm wrong here, guys, but it seems like damage sharing and damage mitigation is broken. What? Who could have actually seen that coming? But yeah, like, um, anytime I first picked Arrowell, I had a much, much better time. So, like, I highly recommend anybody who's still, like, having issues. Um, my main strategy was pick Unbound Knight Arrowell and then pick a whole bunch of DPS. And usually, yeah, that would sometimes get me the win. Thankfully, I was able to hit Master. I don't want to do RTA anymore. And quite frankly, like, hey, what's the reason for why I don't want to do RTA? Well, for starters, there's really no reward to doing RTA. What's the reward? Why is everybody doing it? You guys are doing it for the skin. And some of you guys are doing it for, like, either the notoriety of being Emperor or whatever the hell. I don't even know the ranks. I, that's how little I care. And they want the, uh, the uh, skin or the epic skin that comes out like, psh, I don't even know how often it is. It's several months in between. But honestly, I'm not even too hype about the LQC skin, and it's a really bad reason to be hype for to not be hype for the LQC skin. But the reason why I'm not excited for it is I've lost so much respect and like trust for SG. I really feel like the English variant of that skin is going to have like botched voice lines. I really do. It's either going to have overmodulated voice lines or just straight up cringe dialogue. Oh hey, look, the first round's over. You guys should actually be very, very, very well accustomed to the teams that I use into the Lewis and Yashu comps, and that was no exception. So here's something I do a little bit differently, mainly because it's not Sinya Shu comp, but it is Lua, Sinya, and Apocalypse Ravi. So Edward is actually a very prime, very good counter to a Lua team because the, she will always go into him. So you almost never have to really worry about, like, longevity and with uh doris she's like the og ravi tank it's just like you know those recent buffs that ravi got for the injury you know just like completely fair and balanced very good ideas that totally aren't like stupid in any way shape or form yeah that's like the only thing that will actually kill doris and uh senya is over there and honestly this wasn't even a part of my plan because the randomness on edward is just so crazy you can't really account for what is going to happen with edward there's just so much insanity that he can do at any given moment so that's what kind of sucks about edward but he does work extremely well to go into like just any anti-debuff shenanigans in general but what you're seeing right now is a very prime example of just Lua being cancer. I hate this fucking unit. Like, uh, everything about Lua, I just hate this. I hate this bitch. I'd, I'd rather fight Conqueror Lilius any day of the week, because Conqueror Lilius does cancerous stuff, but she doesn't reset your cooldown counts, or at least push them back by one turn. I can't believe that that's a factor to this character. It's so stupid. So... The big thing that's happening right now is because she's running Guiding Light and I just straight up can't get to her and I didn't use my uh, ML Kawazu's like S3 whenever I should have. I really should have just like burned it, like just, just dropped it as soon as I got it. 
But uh, yeah, he keeps getting reset. So like, we're actually kind of in danger because that if that Lua is probably running, I don't know, 150 something effectiveness or something like that. Because I'm almost 200 effect resist on my Doris. And it's like hitting every time. Yeah, like there's another one. Hit again. So, yeah, it's it, this is frustrating, but I'm still not like worried yet. The biggest obstacle is the A Ravi, and I think I'm, like I think it's a right around here that I'm okay. Cool, my opportunity is here, and I can go for it. And like right there, just prime example. Like she'll always go into Edward, and you really never have to deal with either the Death Break or the uh, Sleep. But, like, you still have to deal with Beguile and the S3 and just how hyper-dumb it is. So, yeah, unfortunately, the Sinya never really got the chance to, like, give me Vigor on Inferno Kawazu. But, hey, you know what? Fine. It worked out. Everything's all good to go. Hunky-dory. Wonderful. Fantastic. Orgasmalicious. Awesome-tastic. Whatever the hell people say nowadays. So, yeah, we've won this fight. But, hey, that still doesn't excuse, like the next level dumb shit that Lua does. Um, funny enough, I didn't see very many Luas in RTA because she was either first immediately banned or whenever they put her onto the teams because of the drafting process, she actually isn't as useful. So here's a team that I had meant to use a couple of Guild Wars ago where I accidentally brought Landy instead of Sinya. And basically exactly what I was talking about in that previous video is what happens here. So the big thing to take away from this, though, is that Selene is really, really fast. I think that was like 250 or something. And because of that, I can't kill the Savior Aiden yet. But we're still okay because our uh, our back pocket pick Aiden or our back pocket pick Senya is uh, going to make all the difference in the world. So the reason Senji is there, she tanks the first hit from the Aiden. Don't care. Then we're going to go ahead and just launch off this S3. And even if she dodges, I don't give a shit. Hit me. I dare you. Oh, what happened, Aiden? Are you dead? Yep. Don't care. So yeah, I lost my counter ability, but honestly, Senya wasn't here for countering. She was here to do um, to do anti crit like extra damage, because that is Celine's absolute one hundred percent biggest weakness that she has. Sure, she can be really really oppressive if you don't have an answer to uh, Celine or to Spirit Eye Celine. But yeah, if you have additional damage and if you also have like a non a non-crit skill like oh i don't know senya for example yeah you can really really mess up those teams like really bad and right here i'm just kind of judging okay so what do i want to do so i'm deciding i'm going to try and kill arrowell just so i can use the uh, senya to just straight up nuke the selene so let's see that does just enough goody goody gumdrops and yeah, thankfully, we just uh, turn cycled enough for the uh, cooldown on Zahox S3, so now we did not lose uh, Sinji. Yay! Alrighty. So, now this whole team is... To those of you who are very astute and you understand the reference that I placed in the title of the video, this is why. So, what's the mistake that happens? That's correct. I should have actually hit the Mercedes first. Because I am very confident in my abilities to actually kill the Mercedes in a single attack. Now, because of that first action right there, um, I'm ultimately going to lose this fight. Because I just, for whatever reason, I had the idea to do this. I've done this particular strategy in the past where... Uh, the Aiden was going to go into the Senji, and then we'll kill the Aiden with Zahak, and then after that, we'll um, we'll deal with the rest. Because like the biggest threat is actually Mercedes. Mercedes is the threat. And funny enough, I think in this entire fight, Magic for Friends never procs once. So, 
the reason why this doesn't work is because the Mercedes had defense at the same time whenever I did that attack. And I can't recall how much HP she had at the start, but I think it was like 12 or 13k. So she very well could have had like a fair amount of defense. Because a lot of people are thinking, oh, it's because she's in the back row, right? Well, not really. The thing with Raz's um, extra barrier thing that he gives is that occurs at the end of the turn. So if you straight up one tap her, she's not going to get a barrier. She's dead. And also because of that, like, I've taken too long. Uh, Sinji doesn't have immortality anymore. It's like you, a lot of you are probably already looking at this and you're like, wow, you're screwed. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening right now. And I'm still trying to salvage this. And honestly, I didn't even need to do this part right here. I had no reason to do that. But what I was going to try and do was I was going to use Sinji's S3, and then I was going to try and just put the Mercedes to sleep and see if I could dual attack her to death, because she's already got one death. But uh, alas, my monkey brain already forgot about Raz. And hey, what's next on Raz's school skill? Oh, it's the AoE attack. Well, rip this run. So, yeah, to review... Um, if you ever see Mercedes, usually go for her first. She's usually almost always the threat because you're usually, you don't want to deal with the RNG of magic for friends. And in my particular case, it was just, I just killed the wrong order and it completely resulted in a loss because of that. And now here, um, you're going to get to see some pretty decent damage. In fact, if the most of you who were paying attention in the last, like, Lua Senya Shu fight with Arunka, I had a prime opportunity for Arunka to do an S3 on a barriered Shu. I think she did 24k damage to her, and that was some good stuff. And we do a... I can't remember what I do to this Senya, because I do the same thing here. And it might be 12k. I can't recall. But either way, yeah, we do big damage on the Senya as well because we also have a barrier to deal with. And as soon as the Senya is done, there's really no threat. The only thing that could possibly go wrong at that point is just if we left the uh, Edward alive for too long. Because if the Edward's alive for too long, he might eventually start like killing with his S3. But even still, that takes so, so long to do. It's really not a threat on, on um, defensive uh, AI. So all we have to do is let's kill the Senya, and then we'll just work on the uh, DN. And as soon as uh, Edward's alone, we really have nothing to worry about. Oh, but Luce, what if uh, you happen to land debuffs on the Edward? Won't he just, like, screw up your team? Well, that's what Rowana's there for. Rowana is the... Easily my favorite Soul Weaver in the entire game. Just from the sheer amount of heals that she really does give. It's actually it's actually really quite crazy. Because, hey, what does Edward do? He attacks with a counter additional attack if he has a debuff on him. And that hits the entire team. Well, what was Rowana originally designed for? She was designed to fight SSB. That unit that we never, ever see ever again. <laughs> Which is funny because Rowana wasn't even like the best counter to SSB because she could land debuffs and stuff on her. But like, hey, whatever. That's beside the point. Rowana does like her job against a lot of this other counter shenanigans extremely well. In fact, you'll see it right here. So yeah, that's like just a casual 5k on my tanks. Like every time for a heal. Yeah, that Edward has no chance of winning. Absolutely none. And of course... I don't get the opportunities to like really play with it. Didn't get any other debuffs. But hey, Arunka is doing work right now. 20k is not bad. I just kind of wish that the damage was a little bit more impressive though. Maybe that's asking for too much. But I think like the conditional effects of the barrier for Arunka is a little too niche. Cause like let's look at like the other like anti-barrier units. Like there's there's I Neening and then there's like a DJB. And DJB is like the premier like barrier abuser. Cause if there's like a FCC or something on the other team, cool, you just straight up lost 30% of your health. Cause that's that's just like what he does. So maybe, like, if Arunka had some kind of, like, AoE bomb or something on it, or... Honestly, the biggest thing that would immediately make her really good is if she just straight up pierced defense 
on like a barrier unit, but like I know that'll probably break the unit or something. Because like this is this is how you get into like really really busted ass territory in Epic Seven. Anything that bypasses defense or pins it or anything like that just suddenly becomes super super broken, and then everybody bitches and moans and complains, and then we gotta fucking nerf the character, and then we. Oh, we have to give like recalls for the unit and blah 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 fucking blah. And just, you know what? I just don't even want to deal with this. Just, I, I don't want to deal with it. I'm positive a lot of the community doesn't want to deal with it. But hey, you guys need to start like doing some better buffs. But hey, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed this Guild War. Please leave a like if you liked it and uh, subscribe for more content. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.